And we are back inside Gilliam Indoor Track and Field Stadium here at the men's standings after 10 events. Arkansas with a 14-point lead over Tennessee. Then Florida five back in third and Kentucky lurking in fourth. Next event on the track, two-section final of the men's 400 meters, the world record set by Michael Norman right here two years ago. Karani James, the 2012 Olympic champion, has the meet record, and Randolph Ross of North Carolina a and has the collegiate best at 45-44. It's been a scratch in lane six. Quincy Hall is out from South Carolina. This is Elijah Godwin, the sophomore from Georgia. Well, before this meet, Petro Scipriano talked about the the age of his competitors coming here to these championships, and he recognized Elijah Godwin as one of those young athletes leading the way of this year's Georgia Bulldog team. But Elijah had the third fastest semi run yesterday, and he had a great season last year. He's the 2019 SEC Co Men's Freshman Runner of the Year. He really attacked that first 200 in his run yesterday. Let's see if he continues to stay aggressive. Set. Two good runners on the inside lanes. Dwight St. Hilaire of Kentucky and Arinze Chance drawing three and four. Very, very tough to be successful out of those inside lanes. More so in the 200, but it's tough here in the 400 as well. Hilaire running well for Kentucky down lane three, but it is Godwin who's going to shoot for that very important pole position. He gets it uncontested. So he keeps his momentum going. He keeps the velocity up. Now he's just got to push. Well, this is the same tactic that Godwin used yesterday. It looks like Arun's chance really tried to push that 200. But man, when a guy sets his mind out to get the pull position, and he does, it puts him in great position to win. Godwin tying up. Look at those arms. Very, very stiff. Knees are not coming up. But Godwin's going to win that first section and establish the time to beat 45-96. And that is the official time, and that is a big personal best for him, close to a half a second lifetime best. And it's partly peaking properly for this, but it's partly, it's a championship. You're at 45. 44. Second section, we are highlighting Bryce Dedman, the senior from Texas A&M. And I don't think there's anybody that knows this track better than he does, Dan O'Brien. Well, that's the benefits of getting a chance to practice on this track every day, have your championships. And you see, you see schools like Clemson, when they get to host their championships, you see Texas A&M, they take advantage of that. And I guarantee you, Bryce Dedman has been in lane five on a number of of occasions. He ran faster in the qualifying yesterday, 45.86 in the prelim. So we know he's able to run faster than the time that Godwin just produced. And that is the advantage for the second section runners. They know what was run in section one. They know what they have to go out after. And from the inside, Jamal Walton of AM, then Jalen Brown of Arkansas, Bryce Dedman, the senior from AM, who we will see in the 4x400 relay later and then Tyler Terry of LSU on the outside in lane six. Well, I liked how you said Elijah Godwin was rewarded. He really did go hard in that first 200, and he paid the price in the last 50, but it paid off for him. 45-96, an outstanding run, but he just you know, didn't do anything crazy, but he went just a little bit faster in that first 200 than he has gone all season long. Debman has run 45.86, so he knows what it feels like to run under the time that it's going to take to win. Remember, you can score points from both sections. You can win from section one. And if no, none of these four athletes runs faster than 45.96, the winner will come out of section one. Set. Walton, Brown, Deadman, and Terry, and all pretty even in this first 100 meters. Now Bryce Deadman making a move. Five is the preferred lane, and Deadman's going to get that pole position without a contest either. He maintains his form and his velocity. Now he's just got to push through this this back stretch.
A&M one and two. Bryce Dedman digging hard, knows what he's got to run. He's got to run sub 45, 96 if he wants the title. Here comes his teammate, Jamal Walton, right there. It's one, two, 45, 53. And Walton likely also under the time from section one. It might be one, two, A&M. And that can put them in the team title conversation in a big hurdy, 45, 51, lifetime best for Bryce Dedman right when he needed it. Well, Bryce Dedman really went out hard in that first 100 to make sure that he got the right position, made a nice cut, took him 50 meters to get to the inside, but he led this thing start to finish, and he drug his teammate along. There you see him working so hard on that inside lane. The youngster, the freshman, Jamal Walton, on the outside, fantastic run for the homeboys right there. And Walton runs a 45-62, starting in lane three. That's even more difficult to do. AM goes one, two, 18 points for the Aggies. Elijah Godwin, who had the section one time to beat, ends up third with a huge lifetime best. And Tyler Terry of LSU picks up five points for the Tigers. And the winner is downstairs with Lara. You got to push from your teammate. You got to push from this home crowd. How much did you use that en route to a victory? Uh, it was everything, um, especially when I heard people cheering for me and they called my name before the race. I'm just thankful I have so much support from my friends and family. It's great. You've been a part of a lot of 4 by 4 titles. This event, huge for your team. What does this do for the Aggies and your team title hopes? Um, it definitely gives us some momentum going into the 4 by 4 it gets us back in our spirits. We were down by a lot last time I looked at the score, but I don't know where we are now. But it definitely gives us some momentum. Congratulations. We'll see you back out here in a bit. Dwight? All right, Laura. Number two time in the world for Deadman, by the way, as we take a look at the second day of the men's heptathlon. Well, let's put a bow on this heptathlon. The first event of the second day. There's your first day leader, 33-14, the freshman from Georgia. Kyle Garland starts day two making these 42 inch hurdles look really easy. 8.16 is his time and he'll score 942 points. He keeps a pretty solid lead over this field and then in the pole vault, an area that he's really looking to improve in this season. This is his second attempt at 15 feet three. And you could say he, you could see he's, he's a new pole vaulter but he's over 15 three for 804 points. He had a solid 250 lead over the field. Well, here's where the field begins to come back on him just a little bit. This is Marcus Belangi, third attempt at 16, two and three quarters, and a huge clearance. I'm really surprised Belangi didn't go a little higher, a little bit higher than that for 8.95, but he got back almost 112 points on Kyle Garland in that event alone. But then it was all Garland in the 1,000 meters. He came in with a 242 personal best. He runs 247, doesn't give anybody in the field a chance to beat him. And he is your SEC champion, making it eight straight for the Georgia Bulldogs. He scores 5,856 points. The women's 400 meter stars will shine next when we return to Texas A&M University as the 2020 edition of the SEC Indoor Track and Field Championships rolls along from College Station. <laughs> 